Hey guys, this is Megan from You Go To Be Kidding, where we are trying our best to learn how to farm and to help you on your journey. Uh, today we are talking about Rivers e-collar. We use a sport dog e-collar to help us manage our livestock guardian dog. And so we're gonna show you which one we have and how we use it, and we hope it's helpful. This is the collar we use. It is a Sport Dog brand Field Trainer 425X. Um, it works for 500 yards, which we wanted the distance because we actually do have quite a long yard. And this is what the collar looks like that goes on the dog. It just has this great long strap. You can cut this off to make it shorter, but she's still growing, so we haven't cut this to length yet. Um, and then it comes with two sets of prongs, longer prongs, which are these uh, because she has so such thick fur. And then a shorter set of prongs if you have a dog like a lab or something that has thinner fur. Um, the power button is on the inside here. You press and hold and it flashes green at you. Um, it'll flash red if the batteries are dead. And then when you go to turn it off, it beeps and flashes red. So super easy to use. This is waterproof. She can wear it wherever. Um, super simple, easy to put on her, uh, pretty comfortable. It's a kind of a rubbery type collar. Um, I really like it. This has worked really well for her. And then this is the remote. So uh, you have the remote here. It has uh, seven levels and a vibrate and a tone. Uh, I do wish that the numbers were on there a little better. Well, I was gonna say I thought that they were starting to rub off, but actually I don't think so. They're a little light sometimes, but um, you just twist it to change the thing. It's really easy to do quickly. And then you have low, medium, and high for each level. So it's actually 21 levels, one through seven, and three variations, low, medium, and high on each one. Uh, both things are rechargeable, which is super awesome. The port on the remote is here, and the port on this is here. Uh, the best part is that the charging cable it comes with actually has two um, has two things, so you can charge them both at the same time. Super awesome. One cord, just two little prongs at the end so that you can charge both things. The remote needs to be charged much less often than the collar. The collar lasts um, about two days. We don't leave it on her for a super long time. Um, 12 hours would be the absolute most that we leave it on her, but usually it's, you know, maybe three or four in the morning time period and three or four in the evening. Um, sometimes if we are home, we'll leave it on her all day, but yeah, 12 hours would be our max. And so with that much usage, it's about two or three days before we need to charge it again. I usually charge the remote with the collar, but I've never actually had an issue with the remote. It has never been low on me. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the dog um, and talk a little bit about more about it on her. Good girl. One of the things we're still working on training her is always being calm when we come up to the fence. Um, in the morning, she can get a little, a little excited. And yep, see, uh, she heard me talking about her. She loves to grab rocks and she gets very playful. Um, she's still a puppy. So I'm going to attempt to film putting this on her but uh I don't know how successful that will be let's see if she'll come over here river river come so and this right here is where our training has a flaw if the collar's on she listens excellently if the collar's not on she doesn't good yes hi girl okay so now I don't know how I'm gonna film and put it on her. Good girl. So cute. Okay. Um, the manual mentions to um, have her standing when you do it. Sometimes she'll stand for me. Sometimes she'll sit. Um, ooh, there's some training issues. Good girl. Will you stay right there while I put it on you? No, probably not. All right. I'm going to try to rearrange and see what I can get done. River. Good girl. All right, so you always want to make sure you turn it on before you put it on her. Then you're looking to um, put it on where it is right on her throat um, and then reel up high right behind her ears. So I am going to 
tighten this. So it does need to be pretty tight. You need to make sure that those prongs are actually on, um, like right under her throat there. If it's loose, it's not gonna do anything at all. So um, usually I'll hold the end here and that helps keep her from being rowdy. She's still a puppy and I have not been great uh, about keeping, she's doing well, but I have, I have to work with her some. So I put this on, I like to keep my fingers under it and I'll usually hook it in, make sure it's in the right spot and then just feel under. So you should be able to get a finger or two under it. Um, I'm gonna say that's a little tight. So I'm gonna back off just one dot and then check. Yeah, so I can get two fingers under there, but it's gonna stay up high near her neck. And then you just stick it through the other things and she is good to go. All right, so to get her out, I try to be mindful of not letting her just like bust out. Uh, we don't have like an official gate on these electric fences. So I usually wait until she looks at me. Okay. And then she comes on out. And so now we have the freedom that I can um, correct her and call her. Uh, there is a lot of training when you start with one of these collars. So the cool thing about the sport dog ones is they come with a really great booklet that goes over exactly how to get started, how to put it on and use a leash to train her that the buzz means the same thing as a leash pull. And they have great online videos. They have a bunch of YouTube videos I've watched. They have the whole booklet in PDF form that I think I read most of it actually on, on my phone or something. Just great help, great support. And so I really appreciate that about Sport Dog. I felt equipped to put it on her and start using it with her right away by reading through there. And uh, I've never used one of these before. And I feel like it's done really well for us. So that's been great. You can say, see she's doing pretty well with these guineas here. She's pretty much just ignored them and that is our goal. I want her to not be paying any attention to them. She's been doing great. Um, if at any time I need to, I can use a correction on her. So uh, when you start, you kind of push it until you see, I'm gonna turn it way down to a two. And I just pressed it and she doesn't seem to even notice that. If I put it on a three, she kind of looked at me. I'm not sure. I don't want to keep pushing it up higher. Um, I usually, use, when I first started, when she was younger, I started on like a three. And now that she's a little bit bigger and older, we use it anywhere between four and seven. Uh, four and five are for situations where it's very low key, maybe with the goats. So I want to be able to tell her no and correct her but she's not going to hurt the goat. She's never been aggressive or anything like that. Um, so I don't want to have a really strong correction for not necessarily a dangerous situation. Uh, when she is around chickens and um, she's gotten much better. So when she is calm, like she just was with the guineas, I would leave that on a low correction of four or five. Sometimes she gets pretty riled up around the chickens and I'll turn that up to a six or a seven and with the cat. Um, the cat sticks up for himself, but it is super important that she knows that she cannot go after the cat or the chickens. And so I will use the stronger correction for her then to break her out of it. Um, she is a livestock guardian dog. That's a unique thing of using a sport dog collar like this with a not normal dog. I'm not familiar with working with a sporting dogs. I know they have really high drive to do what they're trained to do. Um, but I think it's a little bit different than the breeding and the instinct that comes with a livestock guardian dog. So the river here is our Karakachan. She is one year old. She is a livestock guardian breed. And there is just something different about them when she is doing her job and she knows she is protecting you or checking something out. It doesn't matter what you do, she's gonna do that. And so uh, she's gonna go off on her own. So using a seven, is about the only way I can get her back. Oh, gross. River, come. Good. So I didn't even have to beep her there. I've been working with her a lot. She's doing great. She'll come over. These are our male goats out here, and we've got some chickens in there with them. So, good. But yes, this collar has been a huge blessing. It allows us to let her go around. 
and we can keep tabs on her and get her to come back. But again, with a livestock guardian breed, it's um, it takes a lot of work to get it where she will always come. For a while, there were situations where she wouldn't come and it's really important that you don't basically train her to ignore you. So again, read the instructions that came with the sport dog collar. They were really good. I'm really happy with them. And that really helped us with some of those hurdles, making sure she that, that she knew what the beeps meant and wasn't um, in learning to ignore it. So um, it looks like our electric fence is hitting the edge of our barn. I'll have to adjust that in a second, but right now it's keeping in our goats. And this allows River to have freedom and kind of go where she wants when we're out with her. She can go hang out. So one thing I wanted to talk about with this collar is it is an e-collar. People will call them shock collars. And um, it's not that. It's not that. So uh, we have electric fences. And if you touch one of those, I would call that a shock. You get a jolt um, as if you were wearing socks on a trampoline. And you got a big burst of static electricity. Um, and then, you know, depending on how hard your chargers hit, depends on how big that burst is. So um, our fences give you a shock. This collar does not do that. That it, It's not the same thing. And our elect electric fences, all our animals are used to them. River is used to that. Um, and it works so well to protect them from predators, to protect them from getting out, to be able to give them the land and the brush and the things that they need. Um, it's a really great system. But I know some people are worried about that. Probably if you're watching a video about a sport collar, you're not too worried about it, but it is totally different. It is not shocking her like that. It is a stimulation, like a, a feels like a buzz. I have done it on my own hand. Um, all the way up through the levels. When it gets higher, it's pretty uncomfortable, but we only use the higher level when she is kind of in her zone or if she is in danger of actually hurting an animal, like eating a chicken. So um, it is far better to have her slightly uncomfortable and the chicken alive. So um, we are totally okay with using some uncomfortable things to create boundaries that make it safer for everybody around here. But it is, a slight buzz. Uh, if you've ever been to like a chiropractor and they've done any sort of electronic stimulation on your muscles, that light buzz, that's much closer to what it is like. Um, so it is this electronic sensation. It is not a shock. It does not hurt. It is mildly uncomfortable as you get higher up in the levels. But three, four, you can't even feel it as a human until you're up in the three, four range. So uh, it is not something that we feel is hurting her in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it is helping teach her and guide her. It's a great tool for us, and so we have really enjoyed using it. It gives her far more freedom than a leash would, um, and it's obviously far easier for us. It would be very difficult to manage a leash while you're doing farm chores and around here on the farm. So it's a great tool for us. We have really enjoyed it. All right, so River is our Karakachan Livestock Guardian Dog. This is our property. It goes, um, it's kind of skinny and long. It goes far back here, several more acres. Um, and if you can kind of see in the distance, some shelters and some white fencing back here, our sheep and our goats are back here. We move them around all through the pasture. So we need River to be able to go anywhere with us. Um, she is not old enough that we leave her out unattended and our exterior fences. So this tree line there is our <clears throat> northern border. And so our fences are not secure. There's spots where trees have fallen on them. There's holes everywhere. So we cannot just leave her. She lives most of the, when she's unattended, she lives in an electric fence herself. So she can move around and be near the animals. But this sport dog collar is what allows us to train her and work with her. Uh, we actually just had um, one of the neighbor's dogs just barked. And so she perked up and looked over there. Um, because I've worked with her a lot, I did not have to push a button or beep her on her collar. She actually stopped going. It looks like she's found something interesting in the ground. It's not a guinea, it's probably a golf ball. But this sport dog collar has allowed us to work with her as the dogs would bark um, and they're just neighbor dogs. I can control from afar and I can correct her and call her back to me. And that has been a tremendous blessing. So with a livestock guardian dog, um, a tool like this, has been so helpful because I can correct her with animals from far away. Um, if she was just on a leash, 
it's pretty easy to train a dog on a leash not to touch something that you walk past like these guineas or chickens but I need to be able to trust her not to eat them when I'm not here. And so this collar lets me correct her from afar. I've been able to, from inside the house, correct her. And that always, that always makes her look around funny. She can't figure out quite what happened when I beep her from inside the house. Um, I wonder what she found over here. We're gonna go see. What'd you find, River? Yep, ignoring that bird, good job. What'd you find? Something just digging for fun. I'm not sure what she's doing, but she's just hanging out. But this is how we use our collar for a livestock guardian dog. She is not uh, on patrol at night other than inside her electric fence. So it will not work for that. You have to be there to push the button, but it works for us. Uh, she's still a pup, she's only a year old. And so in this time while we're training her, this works perfect for us, for her to be with us when we were out during the day. We do morning chores, she is with us, evening chores as we move the animals. She is with us and we can always correct her and bring her back to us from far away. Thanks for watching. We've been using our collar for between six to nine months and it has worked really well for us. We haven't had any issues. Uh, we definitely recommend it. If you have any questions about the sport dog collar or about how we use it for our livestock guardian dog, I would be more than happy to answer in the comments. Just let me know. Um, we appreciate you and thanks for watching. See you next week.